In lesson three, you introduced the concepts of quantum mechanics. We talked about layers, shapes, directions in space, and then spins. This was all in an effort to understand the arrangement of electrons in these atoms we've been uh, talking about. In lesson four, we're going to go one step further and continue to study this arrangement of electrons and we're going to use a tool called the Duop board. Now your Duop board it consists of the cover of your manipulative booklet. So what you'll need to do first is assemble your Duop board. To do that you will actually disassemble the cover off of your manipulative booklet, paste it together to make it a flat board that you can use on your tabletop. Once you get that accomplished, what you'll do first is orient your board for your students. At the bottom of the board, you should be able to find the word nucleus. Turn that way so that's facing you and is at the bottom of the board. The nucleus here, as it always has been throughout the course, is where we'd find the protons and the neutrons. Everything above that or moving out from the nucleus then are locations where we can find electrons. So in essence the Duwop board is just taking an atom, enlarging it many many sizes, and then freezing it in place. Those electrons that were zooming about in the electron cloud, we've stopped them and frozen them in one position so we can study their locations and shapes and from that information move on to learn about reactivity, non-reactivity, of the elements. So the nucleus is here at the bottom. If you look up the left hand side of your board you see, see a series of notations here. It starts with 1s, 2s, 2p, and so forth. The whole numbers here, the 1s, 2s, 3s, 4s, and 5s, corresponds to the principal quantum number. If you recall the principal quantum number was uh, told about that the electrons occur in layers or shells about the nucleus of in, in an atom. So the one here represents the first layer of electrons, the second layer, third, fourth, fifth. Now if you recall on our periodic table in lesson three we talked about adding some numbers here on the left hand side which told us that we can have up to seven layers of electrons. Seven layers of electrons. The Duop board it's an abbreviated version. In other words, it only goes up to, you see here, the fourth layer. So we could go beyond the fifth, sixth, and seventh layers of electrons. The Duop board just goes up to the fourth layer for, for our friendly chemistry course here. Now, so in addition to these whole numbers out here, which tell us layers, we have some lowercase letters, S, P's, we have some D's, and then if we would continue, we'd have some F's up there also. These are the notations which correspond to the orbital quantum number which told us about shapes. The S stands for spherical. P were the pairs. Remember the light bulbs we used for the pairs. And the D's were the dumbbell shapes. And then the F's were the, quote, fish shapes that we referred to. Also on the Duop board, you can see here on this uh, second level, which has pear-shaped orbits on it, you can see the X, Y, and Z notations. These notations, if you recall, are part of the magnetic quantum number. Remember how we talked about the compass telling us directions. The magnetic quantum number says that the pear-shaped orbits can either be in the X orientation, the Y orientation, or the Z orientation in space. So that's where the X, Y, Z's come in here on these pair shaped orbits here, orbitals. Okay, so we've got the nucleus down here. We've frozen potential locations for electrons. We show that they're in layers. We show they're in different shapes. One other thing we need to note on the Duop board is over here, and it, this may not be in the uh, exact same place on your board as it is here on mine, is this notation here that says increasing energy and there's an arrow that goes up. Increasing energy with an arrow going up. This means as you move from layer to layer going up 
or away from the nucleus here going upwards on the board those electrons hold an increasing amount of energy so the electrons up here have much more energy than these electrons down here closest to the nucleus of the atom so just keep that in mind uh, this will come up later on uh, when we talk about uh, how these uh, orbitals fill now to use um, to use the board we're going to use uh, you have uh, cut out hopefully some little colored discs off the cover of your board I'm going to use some uh, uh, we have some little colored uh, chips here we're going to use and notice that they're in two colors two colors and those two colors are part of the fourth quantum number if you recall was the spin quantum number uh, the spin quantum number said that the electrons travel uh, in pairs, in partners, and that one uh, rotates or spins clockwise and the other spins counterclockwise. So we're going to use two different colors of uh, chips here. These are what we refer to as the doo-wops. Uh, the doo-wops are actually electrons. So I've got two piles here of uh, doo-wops or electrons that we're going to use. Now we said that these electrons uh, travel in pairs and what that means on our doo-wop board is that within each circle here on the doo-wop board we can put up to one pair of electrons. So we can put uh, one of each spin here in each of these circles and then that orbit or orbital is considered full and then you have to move to the next orbital. Okay, so two is the max you can put in each circle. Now, the next uh, thing you need to uh, uh, share with your students is the way the doo-wop board fills, the way electrons are added to an atom. Now, the rule, the rule states, or the theory goes, that the electrons will fill first, and then move, as, as you move up is how the electrons fill in these orbitals. Uh, I like to tell my students is pretend that they've got their doo-wop board in the bathtub. They're playing with it and they have the nucleus down uh, down closest to the uh, level of the water and as the bathtub fills up the water rises up the board and as it water would fill is exactly how we're going to add electrons or doo-wops to our board. This is a specific sequence up here and you're, you'll find that some of it appears to not make a whole lot of sense we get up in here. Uh, we'll talk about that a little later on. Um, but for now, know that when you fill the doo-wop board, it starts at the bottom, nearest the nucleus, and then you move up from level to level as they appear uh, on your doo-wop board. So, uh, the easiest way to learn how uh, to do this is to start with an example. And I believe in the book, the first example that uh, is presented is for the element carbon. So we're going to start with carbon. Carbon is right here, uh, atomic number six. So it's going to tell us carbon has six electrons. So what we'll do is we're going to get six electrons, six doo-wops. We're going to get three of one color and then I'm going to get three of the other color. So you get three of each, so we have a total of six uh, electrons there. And just like we mentioned earlier, we're going to start at the bottom and we're going to fill moving upward. So we're going to start with, we'll put one blue and one yellow here. In our first cup, water fills up, so then we're going to take another blue and then another yellow. And we're to that point there and then water keeps going up. We're going to come to this 2P layer here, the second layer, the electrons in a pear-shaped uh, orientation. And so what we're going to do is we're going to put one in the X and one in the Y. We'll talk about this here in just a minute, how these particularly fill. But I just want to show you, we start filling from the bottom, we move up, and we put one of each spin in each. Now, the, the, the use now of the board will, will read the board. We're going to use it to tell us how these electrons are arranged. So that process is called reading the board. You read your doo-wop board. And what we'll do is we'll say in an atom, 
in an atom of carbon, we'll go back to our carbon here, in an atom of carbon there are a total of six electrons. On the first layer of electrons there are two electrons traveling in a spherical shaped pathway. On the second layer there are two electrons that are traveling also in a spherical shaped pathway. And then also within that same second layer we've got two more electrons that are traveling in pear-shaped uh, orbitals. One is traveling in an X orientation, so it's a pair going in horizontally, and then we have one in the Y, so it's going up and down in a, a uh, vertical orientation. Now, each electron within there are pairs, and one is spinning clockwise, one counterclockwise. It doesn't matter how you say, you know, by colors, which is clockwise, which is counterclockwise. The point here is that one is spinning one way and one is spinning the opposite direction. So, that's an atom of carbon. We've got electrons on the first layer, traveling spherical. The second layer out, two more traveling spherical. And then also within that second layer, we have two electrons uh, going in pear-shaped orbits in the X and Y orientation. Okay, let's clear our board now. We'll take these off and let's look at another example here. But then we'll talk about this X, Y, Z uh, stuff going on here. Uh, let's look at neon. Let's look at neon uh, here. Noble gas family member neon right there is atomic number 10. Okay, so if it's atomic number 10, that tells us it has 10 electrons. So we're going to get five of each color. One, two, three, four. I got five of those, and I'll get five blue. Three, four, and five. And we'll start filling our board now. We're doing neon number 10. So we'll start here. Like water fills up, we're going to go one orange or one yellow, one blue. Water moves up, we're going to put another yellow, another blue. Now, we're to this P layer, and we need to, to learn another rule here. There was a uh, chemist, chemist by the name of Halstead, and he his contribution to this whole idea of electron uh, arrangement is what's known as the Halstead rule. And his uh, theory said that electrons will fill one electron in each direction before it fills a second in each direction. So in other words, we're going to put one electron that'll travel in the X orientation, the horizontal pair shapes, and then we're going to put it'll fill one in the Y, the vertical, and then there'll be one in the Z, the in and out orientation. Then it'll come back and put it second. So we'll, then we'll have a second going in the X, a second in the Y, and then a second in the Z orientation. So for an atom of neon, we'll read our board now. So we're going to start back. We've got a, in an atom of neon, atomic number 10. There's a total of 10 electrons on the first layer, two electrons traveling in spherical shape path. On the second layer, we have two electrons also traveling in a spherical shape path. Also on the second layer, we've got two shapes within the second layer now, traveling in pear-shaped orbits. We've got two electrons going in the X orientation, two in the Y, up and down, and then two in the Z, the in and out orientation for electrons. And we need to note that Within each pair, we've got one electron traveling clockwise and the other one traveling counterclockwise. So that's reading the board now, reading the doo-wop board for an atom of neon. Now remember our goal here is to study this arrangement and eventually we'll get to the point where knowing this arrangement will help us know about reactivity and non-reactivity and why, why certain things join, certain things don't, certain things explode, certain things just sit there with no, uh, no action at all. So let's go ahead and let's take on another example here. We'll take these off. 
let's go a little bit higher on the board here. Let's find, uh, why don't we come out here, let's look at uh, potassium. Potassium, if you look here on our periodic table, it says that we should go clear into the fourth layer. Clear into the fourth layer. So on our doo-wop board, we should get up clear up until in this fourth, fourth layer here. Alrighty, so potassium, we look again, potassium is atomic number 19. 19, now that's an odd number of electrons, so an odd number of doo-wops, and it doesn't matter which do you get the odd number or the 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 odd one, the one that has the, the least, the, the one less amount of doo-wops. So uh, 19, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get uh, 10, 10 of one color, two, three, and you don't have to count them out first, I'm just doing that to to be consistent here. Okay, and then I'm going to get nine of the others. Eight. That's pretty close there. And we're going to start filling our bore just like it fills in the bathtub. We'll start down at the bottom here nearest the nucleus. We'll go, we've got one yellow, then one blue, then we'll move up. One yellow, one blue. In the second layer, going P shapes now. We're going to go Halstead rule. We're going to go one, one, one. Oops, you get out of there. And then we're going to go two, two, two. So now we've got X, Y, and Z. So, so far we've got two, four, six, eight. We've got ten electrons. So we're going to keep going. So we're coming out to the third layer now. And we're going to go one there. Okay, so that takes us to 12 electrons. And then so we are come up to the third layer pair shapes now. So we're going to go X, Y, Z. We're going to follow that Halstead rule again. So we're going to go 1 in X, 1 in Y, 1 in Z. Okay, and then we're going to go second in X, second in Y, second in Z. Alrighty, how far have we gone now? We've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. Alright, and we said uh, potassium was atomic number 19. So we just need one more. So and it doesn't matter which color, we're just going to take one more and we're going to drop it right there. So now we've got our total 19 electrons and sure enough, we made it to the fourth layer out here. Potassium, if we look on our chart, it goes clear to that fourth, fourth layer there, potassium. Let's read our board now. Let's read it, our board for potassium. We can say potassium, which has atomic number 19, has a total 19 electrons on the first layer. There are two electrons traveling in spherical shape path. So on the second layer, two electrons traveling spherical shape path. Also on the second layer, we have six electrons here, two, four, six, traveling pear shaped paths, two in the X, two in the Y, two in the Z orientation. We move up, we're on the third layer now. We've got two electrons traveling in a spherical shape, ball shaped path. Also on the second layer, we've, I'm sorry, on the, on the third layer, we've got six electrons here, Traveling in pear-shaped paths, two in the X, two in the Y, and then two in the Z orientation. And we move up to the fourth layer. We've got one lone electron out there, and it's traveling in a spherical-shaped path. So we have these different shells of electrons, some going in, in uh, spherical shapes, some going in pairs, and we just keep building, building, building these electrons uh, around the nucleus of the atom. And remember that they're all moving super fast. So it just looks like a cloud around it. So we have to imagine these these different shaped pathways of the electrons we have. So this is the uh, arrangement of electrons for an atom of potassium here. All right, let's go a little a little more complex. Let's move clear up here into some of these D-shaped orbits here. 
All right. Why don't we do? Um, let's do titanium. Titanium is right here. Ti titanium. Its atomic number is 22. 22. So half of 22 is 11. So I'm going to get 11 of each color then. So I'm going to get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. And then I'll get 11 of the yellows here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. Okay, let's fill our board now for an atom of titanium. Like we've done before, we'll start at the bottom always and we'll move up. So we're going to start with one here and then we'll get a blue and then we'll go to the second layer. We're going to go one and two. Then we're on the P shape, we're going to go X, Y, Z. So we have the X orientation and then the Y and then the Z and then we're going to go back following that Halstead rule X, Y, Z. We'll move to the third layer. We'll have uh, uh, one there and then the second on the third layer. Also in the third layer we've got these P shapes and we're going to go X, Y, and Z and then we're going to go X, Y, and Z. Okay, now we're here on going to the uh, fourth layer. Keep moving up. Let's count how many we've got in so far. Make sure we're still good. We've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. So we're going clear to uh, titanium is 22. So 18. So we go 19 and 20. 19 and 20. And then we have, we're going clear to 3D. Okay, and so we're at to 20, so we need 21, and we're going to do 22. Okay, now we've got titanium here with 22 electrons, and what I want to do is show you here uh, a, what appears to be almost a mistake in the board, but in actuality is accurate. And what happens here? If you notice, if we go up our principal quantum numbers here, our layers here, we go first layer, second, third, then we go clear to the, we go to the fourth layer, but then we come back to the third layer here. And peop, some people think, well, what? That doesn't make sense. It seems like we should just go one through the fourth, right on up to seven. The the issue is right in here, and I want to take you back to this point we made earlier about increasing energy increasing energy over here. What happens is that not only does the energy vary between layers as we go up, but the energy also varies according to shape. The S's have the least, the P's have a little bit more than that, the D's have more, and the F's have the most. If we're comparing within shapes. Ready? So as we go up the board here, we come to this point where we come to, we go three P's and four S's. Okay, so we have a combination here of energy uh, situation where we've gone, yes, we've gone to the fourth layer, but they're only S shaped uh, electrons. So they don't have, they have a little more energy than these three P's do. Okay, now if we go to the third layer, we come to some D shapes. The D's have a lot more, or a relatively more amount of energy than these S's do, and so therefore we're, it looks like we're, we've kind of stepped back a layer, but actually we're continuing upwards in the amount of energy that the electrons have, and therefore our, our arrow up here is a valid arrow that as we go up the board, we're going to increase in uh, energy amounts held by the electrons. So yes, trust the board. It's written correctly and this seems like a strange little very uh, aberration here but it is indeed a truthful representation of the current theories on quantum mechanics here. Okay, so and you notice here on the D layer 
we've got one, two, three, we've got five different positions here, five different locations for electrons. Now some text will uh, treat this as A, B, C, D, and E out here. In friendly chemistry, uh, we don't go quite into that much detail, but just note that there's five potential locations, and you can have two in each, so you can go ten electrons on a D-shaped uh, uh, pathway here, those dumbbell-shaped uh, pathways for electrons to be following. And then we'll go on to 4P, then we go to the fifth layer, 4D, and so on. And in the text, and it'll be explained later on about how that works, and it's right in here where we have this group of elect, uh, elements right in here, and it appears that they don't line up like they did before. They kind of slid down a notch. So we've got some threes over here, but then we have a, a scandium and titanium, just like we saw they're back to a th third layer. And if you look here at scandium, well, you think, well, it should be on the fourth layer. But in actuality, this whole section of elements here in the center, they're called transition elements. Uh, we call them the outlaws. They don't follow a lot of rules very well, so we kind of call them the outlaws. They have, in essence, kind of slid down bump, one notch there so that these will all be filling 3D shapes and these will fill 4D shapes, even though out here our numbers are uh, saying otherwise. Okay, so don't get hung up on that just yet. We'll, we'll cover it more late in greater detail in a later lesson. So, let's review what we've learned so far uh, in this uh, lesson on the DUOP board. We said the DUOP board uh, is a representation of the arrangement of electrons in atoms. We said it uh, shows that at the bottom there's the nucleus that electrons fill beginning at the layers closest to the nucleus, uh, moving upwards or moving outwards from the nucleus. Uh, the board tells us the layer that the electrons are on, our principal quantum number. It tells shapes, S, P, Ds, and Fs. It also tells the amount of energy held by these electrons. It also gives us an idea of which orientation, according to the magnetic quantum number. We learned about the Halstead rule that tells us we fill one in each before we go back and fill the second in each. And then ultimately we learn how to read the board. Reading the board tells us, uh, gives us information on how these electrons are arranged. Now the next, uh, in the next lesson, you're going to go another step further in uh, utilizing the DUOP board to write down uh, notations to take the information here and be able to write it onto paper uh, to and then study these uh, various arrangements of electrons. So this ends our introduction to the DUOP board. Uh, there are games and activities to help you practice uh, filling the board and we'll look at those next.